Hello. This video is part of a series about the 1946 short story, A Logic Named Joe, by Marion Leister. In the first two videos, we talked about the story and its technology. Last video, we added further information about those ideas in the current world. And now we're going to see more of that. So far, we have seen many aspects of the short story quite present in our reality today with the remarkable difference that in the story humans appear as just the users of the information, but the machine, a logic, is the agent that provides the criminal service, while in reality technology facilitates the deed, but it is humans that are in control. Or are they? So how close are we to the scenario described in the book? How close are we for the machine to take the initiative and start doing things by itself? Things that we can consider inconvenient and even harmful. The following article shows that this dystopian scenario is much closer to us than we would like to. Replace the word logic with algorithm and you'll see we're doomed already. Okay, the story is not new, but the core idea still applies to our reality today from BBC News. When algorithms control the world, algorithms are spreading their influence around the globe. If you were expecting some kind of warning when computers finally get smarter than us, then think again. There will be no soothing whole 9000 type in voice informing us that our human services are now surplus to requirements. In reality, our electronic overlords are already taking control, and they are doing it in a far more subtle way than science fiction would have us believe. Their weapon of choice, the algorithm. Behind every smart web service is some even smarter web code, from the web retailers calculating what books and films we might be interested in, to Facebook's friend finding and image tagging services, to the search engines that guide us around the net. It is these invisible computations that increasingly control how we interact with our electronic world. At last month's TED Global Conference, algorithm expert Kevin Slavin delivered one of the tech show's most sit up and take notice speeches where he warned us that the maths that computers use to decide stuff was infiltrating every aspect of our lives. Among the examples he cited were a robo cleaner that maps out the best way to do housework, and the online trading algorithms that are increasingly controlling Wall Street. We are writing these things that we can no longer read, warned Mr. Slavin. We've rendered something illegible, and we've lost the sense of what's actually happening in this world we've made. Million Dollar Book, Peter A. Lawrence, The Making of a Fly, The Genetics of Animal Design. The book was briefly one of the world's most expensive. Algorithms may be cleverer than humans, but they don't necessarily have our sense of perspective a failing that became evident when Amazon's price-setting code went to war with itself earlier this year. The Making of a Fly, a book about the molecular biology of a fly from egg to fully-fledged insect, may have been a riveting read, but it almost certainly didn't deserve a price tag of $23.6 million, 14.3 million pounds. It hit that figure briefly on the side after the algorithms used by Amazon to set and update prices started outbidding each other. It is a small taste of the chaos that can be caused when code gets smart enough to operate without human intervention, thinks Mr. Slavin. This is algorithms in conflict without any adult supervision, he said. As code gets even ever more sophisticated, it is reaching its tentacles into all aspects of our lives, including our cultural preferences. The algorithms used by movie rental site Netflix are now responsible for 60% of rentals from the site. 
as we rely less and less on our critical faculties and word of mouth, and more on what Mr. Slavin calls the physics of culture. Okay, the situation I just described really affects everybody, even in their entertainment choices. Whenever you choose a movie or TV show to watch, the algorithm is much likely to be present. You were watching this video and most probably it was because the algorithm recommended it to you. Leading role. Cold is playing its own lead role in Hollywood. British firm Epagogix is taking this concept to its logical conclusion, using algorithms to predict what makes a hit movie. It takes a bunch of metrics, the script, plot, stars, location, and crunches them all together with a box office takings of similar films to work out how much money it will make. The system has, according to chief executive Nick Meany, help studios to make decision about whether to make a movie or not. In the case of one project, which had been assigned a 180 million pound production cost, the algorithm worked out that it would only take 30 million at the box office, meaning it simply wasn't worth making. For another movie, it worked out that the expensive female lead studio had earmarked for a film would not yield any more of a return than using a less expensive star. This rather clinical approach to filmmaking has irked some who believe it to be at odds with a more creative, organic way that they assume their favorite movies were made. Mr. Mini is keen to play down the role of algorithms in Hollywood. Movies get made for many reasons and it credits us with more influence than we have to say we dictate what films are made. We don't tell them what the plot should be. The studio uses this as valuable business information. We help people make tough decisions, and why not, he said. Despite this, the studio Apologix has worked with for the last five years does not want to be named. It is, says Mr. Mini, a sensitive subject. Secret Sauce If algorithms had a Hollywood-style walk of fame, the first star would have to go to Google. Its famously secret code has propelled the search giant to its current position, as one of the most powerful companies in the world. No one would doubt that this, its system has made searching a whole lot easier, but critics have long asked at what price. In his book, The Filter Bubble, Eli Pariser questions how far Google data crunching algorithm go in harvesting our personal data and shaping the web we see accordingly. Meanwhile, a recent study by psychologists at Columbia University found that reliance on search engines for answers is actually changing the way humans think. Since the advent of search engines, we are reorganizing the way we remember things. Our brains rely on the internet for a memory in much the same way they rely on the memory of a friend, family member, or co-worker, said report author Betsy Sparrow. Increasingly, she argues, we are knowing where information can be found, found rather than retaining knowledge itself. Ah, the stock market. So it is not just our entertainment choices which are at risk, or social media. Now we can see it's directly affecting the economy, and the result can be complete chaos. Flash crash. Move over, traders. There's a new cold in town. In the financial markets, cold is increasingly becoming king as complex number crunching algorithms work out what to buy and what to sell. Up to 70% of Wall Street trading is now run by so called black box or algo trading. That means, along with the wise guy city traders, banks and brokers now employ thousands of smart guy physicists and mathematicians. But even machine precision supported by the human called wizards doesn't guarantee things will run smoothly. In the so-called flash crash of 2.45 on May 6, 2010, a five-minute dip in the markets caused momentary chaos. 
A rogue trader was blamed for the 10% Dow Jones index fall, but in reality it was the computer program that the unnamed trader was using that was really to blame. The algorithm sold 75,000 stocks with a value of 2.6 billion pounds in just 20 minutes, causing other super fast trading algorithms to follow suit. Just as a bionic limb can extend a human's capability for strength and stamina, the electronic market shows its capacity to exaggerate and accelerate minor, minor blips. No one has ever managed to pinpoint exactly what happened, and the market recovered minutes later. The chaos forced regulators to introduce circuit breakers to halt trades if the machines start misbehaving. The algorithms of Wall Street may be the cyber equivalent of the 80s yuppie, but unlike their human counterparts, they don't demand red braces, cigars, and champagne. What they want is fast pipes. Spread Networks has been building one such fiber optic connection, shaving three microseconds off the 825 mile, 1,327 kilometer, trading journey between Chicago and New York. Meanwhile, a transatlantic fiber optic link between Nova Scotia in Canada and Somerset in the United Kingdom is being built primarily to serve the needs of algorithmic traders and will send shares from London to New York back and back in 60 milliseconds. We are running through the United States with dynamite and rock sauce, so an algorithm can close a deal three microseconds faster, all for a communication system that no humans will ever see, said Mr. Slavin. As algorithms spread their influence beyond machines to shape the raw landscape around them, it might be time to work out exactly how much they know and whether we still have time to tame them. Well, that's the end of the analysis of a logic named Joe and how the ideas expressed in the story can have an impact in our current reality. As usual, give this video a like, comment, and subscribe. And make sure you catch the first videos of the series, the ones about the story itself and other aspects mentioned in it, as well as the last video where I talk about crimes on the web. Next episode, we'll go through an entirely different story. See you all then.